morning NC youth um today's devo is going to be a little bit different because as we wrap up uh the book of deuteronomy uh chapter 34 which talks about moses's death i want to talk about his legacy and connect that to uh what's been happening in our society and uh what we are called to do and really use that to reflect and think about um how god is calling us to live today and so if you remember his story he was a shepherd in the wilderness and god comes and disrupts his life and uses him to uh, go against the injustice that the Israelites had to face as slaves for hundreds of years. And so Moses, um, he is sent to Egypt and to go against Pharaoh. And while you and I, we don't have this actual Pharaoh that we have to fight against, as Christians, I also think that we are called to, um, uh, to save people from the grip of sin and injustice. And we do that through both the gospel proclamation and also gospel mission. And part of that is really going out for the poor and the oppressed and fighting for them in the name of Jesus Christ. And so as we look at Moses' legacy, I think uh, there are many things that we could learn from him about how we could do that. And the first thing is this, that um, despite his fear that he was courageous in going forward to fight against Pharaoh, I think for you and me, um, the challenge is that there is this life that we want to live and we don't want to be interrupted. We don't want our lives to be disrupted. But when God comes in, what he does is he will not align his will to your will, but he will disrupt your life to align it to his will, his calling for you. And right now, you know, it might be that God is calling you to really fight this battle of anti-racism or maybe for some of you, it's something else, maybe like human trafficking, world poverty, uh, immigration rights, and there are so many more. And as God convicts your heart, we can't remain indifferent and silent and just stay where we are. But we have to go forward to the place that God has called us to in the courage that comes from trusting in God and to fight the battles that he has called us to fight. And secondly, um, the, the reason why I think Moses was able to do that and, to, and he was able to perform all those miracles and, um, in, in both Egypt and by you know, splitting the Red Sea and so much more was because he was constantly seeking God. Uh, the beauty of Moses' relationship with God was not that he was able to do these powerful things on the surface, but it says there was no one else who talked to God face to face. There was this intimacy, and you know Moses was a man who constantly sought after God in that. And I want to ask you, as you are being bombarded with everything that's been going on, are you seeking the Lord? Is your heart, before you try to do something, are you coming before God in word and prayer and asking God, God, what is your heart? God, I know you're sovereign. There are questions I have, but I want to come and I want to know your heart and I want to obey your will. I want to be your instrument of love and truth. I want to be your hands and feet. Would you use me in this society? Would you use me in the context that you have placed me in as a prophet and as, as, as a follower of Jesus Christ? So are you coming to God in that way, seeking Him and, and seeking that intimacy? Because if not, then whatever we do, it's going to end up being our agenda, our plan, our wishes, our form of justice. But those will all fall short because ultimately as sinners, um, those things will not bring about this division that we have because that only comes through God and His sovereign orchestration and through faithful people of God in obedience, sacrificing their lives for those causes. And so it starts with being intimate with God. And so I, and so that's the second thing. But the last thing is that Moses, he was extremely patient and humble. Uh, there were times when the Israelites, they went against Moses and the Israelites, they rebelled against God. So God was about to destroy them. And Moses said, no, God, I plead for them that you would save him. You see, he was patient with rebellious people. And for some of us today, as we uh, seek God's truth, maybe there are those in our lives, even in our youth group, who disagree with the things that we know are true in the Bible. And our response in the gospel and in the truth is not to accuse, blame, or fight them, but to share the truth in love in patience and mercy and grace as we remember that that's been done for you and me and when we do what's going to happen is that we will um, converse with them we will hear them out we will learn even despite our differences and through that we could also then share the truth of the gospel 
and I really believe that as we do so in that patient way, then people will hear us. Not when we share the truth in pride and judgment, but rather when we deliver the truth in, in humble grace, on humble mercy, in humble uh, patience um, that, that God has shown to us. And so I hope that all of us today, as we um, just experience so much in this season, um, that we would fight courageously against the injustice that we are becoming aware of. And that we would do so by uh, just being intimate with God first, by seeking God, His word, His truth, and His love. And lastly, that we would do so in patient mercy and humble, hum humble mercy as Christ did for you and me. Have a good day, guys. Yeah.